Jai Masiki. I'm so excited to be here this uh, evening time. Thank you for the wonderful introduction. And as announced, I'm Santosh Thomas, basically from Kerala. But last 19 years, I'm stationed in a place called Jamtara. It's a small place, but for the assembly work, it has much uh, significance. And when I went there in 99, it was uh, Bihar. So we were known as Biharis before. But after the bifurcation of the state in 2000, we are in Jharkhand. There is a new state called Jharkhand. Um, we are at the border of West Bengal, um, working with a small Bible school. Started 31 years back. God's servant, uh, George Kurian late. Uh, Uncle Shenoy, who is resting in the presence of the Lord in 2004, uh, he passed away. And Uncle Samuel Kurian, and he's alive with his, uh, he's taking rest with his uh, children in Minnesota. So I came to U.S. for uh, two conferences, and I had a plan to be here in uh, Canada for three weeks, but due to some uh, circumstances, I have got to leave on Monday. Thank you for receiving me here. I see some uh, uh, familiar faces. And thank you for praying for, the, for, for me for the past many, many years. And I'm so excited to be here this evening time. I know that the climate is uh, not so suitable. And in our place in northern part of India, if you keep a meeting at 3 o'clock, no one will come. But I praise God that many of you have come here, uh, though it is summer here. It's very hot in our place also now. Um, I'm going to give a small sermon. A short sermon. Some of your faces are very happy. So we'll be having uh, one more session in the evening. So before I get into the word, let me ask you a question. Anyone can give the answer. I'm going to speak from the smallest book in the Bible. Which is the smallest book in the Bible? Yeah, there is one answer, Jude. Someone else? Someone else said, Philemon, my hearing power is very powerful. Yeah. <laughs> you can be a little more louder. Which is the smallest book in the Bible? Huh? Yeah, someone gave two answers. No mark for that. <laughs> yeah. Second John is the smallest book in our Bible. Well, third John, in the original language, Third John is the smallest one, but in our English and other vernaculars, Second John is the smallest book in the New Testament or in the whole Bible. So I'm going to speak from that smallest book in the Bible to give a, a, a short sermon this evening. So turn with me to Second John. And in the beginning, someone can read for me louder. Verse 4. Verse 4. We know that this book is written by John. Well, John was in his old age. All of the disciples became martyrs. It is John who got natural death among all other apostles. In fact, we know the history. In AD 95, John the Apostle was arrested for preaching the gospel. And he was one of the elders in Ephesian church. That's what tradition says, though there is no solid, credible proof from the scripture. So he was arrested by Domitian, then emperor of the Roman Empire. And it seems the tradition says like this, he was arrested for preaching the gospel and he was brought before everyone and said, if you refuse your faith, we will let you go. And he said, I'm not going to reject Christ. Then he was thrown into the boiling oil. And tradition says he was swimming in the boiling oil. And Domitian was ashamed and he ordered that he should be exiled to island of Patmos. And so he was exiled to island of Patmos in AD 95, thinking that 
he will be killed by some wild animals or he will be killed by some other people normally the convicts some criminals are exiled to this barren rocky island in aegean sea so domitian thought that this man will never come back but again history says in ad 96 domitian was assassinated by an assassin and after his death john the apostle was brought back to the mainland and he has written the book of revelation for us again second question so how, how many books john the apostle has written in the bible five is the right answer so we have john the gospel then we have first second third john then we have we have revelation no problem that's good so i don't want anyone to sleep during the message time if you can answer some of these questions that would be good we also take classes in the afternoon time in our bible school sometimes we take classes for the teachers also so we know uh, keep you awake but if anyone sleep i have no problem but please don't snore <laughs> you know if you snore what is the problem one who sleeps beside you may get up so that will be a disturbance for that person <laughs> good so john has written five books in the new testament if you notice these five books in the bible the gospel of john the key words of john gospel is chapter 20 verse 30 and 31 you know if you notice those verses it's written very clearly i am writing these things so that you may believe that jesus christ is the son of god so the focal point in that book the key word in that book the main theme in that book is believe christ that's the uh, main verse in the whole bible which is the most important verse in the whole bible john 3:16 for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son whosoever believeth so you can find the word believe more than 100 times in this book all the signs all the miracles that you see in the book of john is written so that you and i may believe that jesus christ is the son of god so the word believe is the most important subject in the book of john gospel of john but when you come to his epistles you know what is the most important word sunday school students very good love is the most important word in that love god love your neighbor god is love you say that you love an invisible god you hate your brother well you are a hypocrite love god love christ that is the main theme in three epistles of john so you have believe you have faith you have love but when you come to the last book in the bible last book of john you know what is the main subject hope for the coming of the lord and the lord is going to come hope is the main subject and our lord's coming is imminent he is going to come at any time so hope is the subject and paul says these three important ingredients in our christian life where right first corinthians chapter 13 last verse faith hope and love and in that love is the most uh, important ingredient you and i need to practice in our christian life and john covers these three things and we have read a beautiful verse here in verse 4 and we know that this book is written to a small assembly gathered in a home that's what many scholars say in verse 1 the elect lady you know we have a chosen lady here in verse 1 could be this lady referring to as home assembly which is gathered in a house in the early times in the first century during the apostles period people used to gather not in assembly halls not in public places 
they used to gather in small houses or in synagogues sometimes in, in, in some places. So this could be, this lady could be referring to a small assembly. And other scholars say this assembly must have been started by John the Apostle. Possibilities are there because he says in verse 4, I rejoice greatly that I found of thy children. Thy children means the assembly believers who must have come to the Lord through the ministry of John. And I am so rejoicing my children are walking in the truth. Now the word truth is repeatedly used from verse 1 to 4. If you notice that, you can underline that. If you are a Bible student, you should notice any word that repeatedly used. I don't know how many of you seriously study the Bible here. I fell in love with Bible when I was a young boy. And I still study this. And the word truth occurs more than five times in the first four verses. You need to live, you need to walk in the truth. And the next verse we read, we need to learn the truth. Then we have, we need to love the truth. Then we must live the truth. We must propagate that truth. And he says, my children are walking in the truth. I'm so excited when my children are walking in the truth. Well, the word walking, in New Testament it is an analogy for Christian growth. Huh? Ephesians. If anyone attended uh, the marriage uh, yesterday, Brother Viji was reading from Ephesians chapter 4, and it says you should walk in lowliness, walk in humbleness, walk in unity, walk, walk in the truth. You know, in the book of Ephesians, if you notice that, walking is a picture for Christian growth. Are you walking in Christ? Are you walking in the truth? You know our life, our Christian life starts with the word birth. It starts with the birth. That's what Lord Jesus said in John chapter 3. You must be born again. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Verse 3. If you notice verse 5. Except a verily, verily I say unto you. Except a man be born of water and spirit, he cannot enter. Well, in verse 3 it is, you cannot see the kingdom of God. In verse 5, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So, our life starts with a birth. We are all born physically, that is why you are here. You have a physical birthday. But let me ask you this evening, do you have a spiritual birthday? I never had a spiritual birthday. I thought I am a child of God. I come from an assembly background. My parents were good believers. But I never had any personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. You, have, you had a physical birth. You remember your birthday. Do you remember your birthday? Yeah, be careful. My question is very clear. Do you remember your birthday? No answer. Brother, we remember the date, but we don't remember the birth, you know, the, 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 the day. Your mommy told you, your dad told you. We, I don't remember that day. My mommy told me, my father told me such and such date, you were born. We can't remember. You are not born into this world by your desire or by your choice. You are not here on this earth. You did not select this world. You did not select your country. You did not select anything in this world. God wanted you to be here. Now, if you compare your spiritual birth, it's very similar. I didn't do anything for my spiritual birth. I did not obtain it by my might or my, by education or by my any of the things that I could be proud of. And I just put my trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Is there anyone who does not know Christ personally? Are you born into the family of God? Your life should start with like a baby. You know, one doctor visited a, an interior village in the northern part of India. And he went to a remote village and he 
met the sarpanch there sarpanch means the mukhiya the main the tribal leader and this doctor wanted to put him down what kind of village you have you have no hospital no uh, uh, school no facility here he wanted to put down that village and the man and he said how many big people are born here and the tribal leader said sir, sir only babies are born here right only babies are born let me ask you this evening are you a child are you a child of god are you born into the family of god if you are born you will grow yeah in some of the families i stayed in U in us last couple of weeks there were small babies they were feeding the children infants we feed our children and we will make sure that the child grow and the child must grow every moment every day if you are a science student you must have studied in science all the living organisms all the living things grow you have the plants outside you know plants always grow and a, there is a principle in science when a tree stops growing listen carefully when a plant stops growing scientists say you know what do they say decay starts i tell everywhere that is true in our spiritual life also when growth stops decay starts write it down in your diary never forget if you are born into the family of god you will grow and every day you must grow are you growing if you are not growing that means you are decaying either you grow or you decay there is no still position in christian life either you grow or you decay either you grow or you are backsliding there is no stagnated still position in christian life there can be ups and downs there can be ups and downs in christian life but either you grow or you decay let me ask you this evening are you growing you saved for 5 years 10 years 15 years are you growing or we are babes in christ carnal christians as paul writes to corinthians are we growing or groaning are we growing or decaying when my when my eldest son was born we were so excited and uh, we used to observe his uh, you know movements how he is growing we used to take photos in those days no digital photos in those days we have to the reel so we used to take the photos all expressions how he is growing first one we were so excited second and the third one we forgot <laughs> we don't have much photos <laughs> it happens in every family i think so we were so excited and he started sitting he started crawling he started uh, you know moving and someone told my wife that children walk after 10 months and uh, he was born in march 12 months are over and he is not walking and every day he would she would come and say acha say he she he is not walking and i said see wait for some time he will walk so she is worried he is not walking he sits and crawls and we were so excited we have taken one month two months three months four months all months photos 12 months are over my wife is so sad so disappointed because someone told her that after 10 months children walk it was month of uh, april 2004 we were having a summer camp you know every april we have a summer camp on our campus so young people come for discipleship classes for 10 days even this year we had so so many god servants at least 10 to 15 god servants then uh, some speakers so all the participants more than 100 uh, young people so we were all sitting outside and we were looking at him so the child got excited because he was getting all the attention 
and this fellow he will move he will get up and uh, everyone was looking at him he stood and he fell down he stood he put the first step he fell down and one evangelist went and helped him to walk and one another senior evangelist said brother don't help him he has to get up alone and walk alone and this fellow was all the more excited because he was getting the attention from everyone and we were all observing he got up he put the first step he fell down he put the second step he fell down again he was struggling to get up if you notice you know how children struggle to walk you must observe there are nurses who are sitting in uh, nicu and maybe in pediatrician you know that ward and all that you know what i'm talking children they struggle to walk and this fellow got up we were all excited and he fell down oh no he is not able to walk and he put the second step he fell down put the third step again now he put all his steps and he started running and we all clap yes our son is walking now you cannot catch him he is a fine soccer player <laughs> yeah he is 15 years old now we were all excited imagine if we are not growing imagine our children can't walk imagine our children can't run how disappointed it would be have you ever thought if i don't grow in the grace of the lord if i don't grow spiritually it would be so disappointing to my heavenly father not only when we commit sin huh? do not grieve the holy spirit ephesians 4:30 we teach that not only when we commit sin god is disappointed if we are not growing if we are not walking if we are not shining if we are not running for the lord our heavenly father is disappointed that's what verse 4 says i greatly rejoice my when my children are walking in truth are you growing my my brothers and sisters maybe saved for 10 years 15 years 20 years our assemblies are filled with lactose and farax farax babies well here what do you call nan what do you call baby's food no baby's milk yeah farax babies are we growing we must walk in the truth when we grow we must grow in di- r- uh, right direction that's what the scripture is very clear i am greatly rejoicing that i found of thy children walking in truth when you grow you and i must grow in right direction we must grow in right direction because believers were walking in the truth what is the truth john chapter 14 only one person ever said i am the way the truth and the life when we walk we must walk in christ that's what it means to be walking in the truth we have one more truth you know that verse well there are no two two absolute truths but that truth complements this truth this that is the incarnative truth then we have the written word john 17 17 what is that john 17 17 what does it say sanctify them by thy word and thy word is truth have you ever seen that verse john 17 17 his word is truth when you grow you must grow in the right direction sanctify them through thy truth through thy word thy word is truth 
Are we walking in Christ? Are we walking according to God's word? I would say, walk in Christ. Walk according to God's word. If we are not growing in these two directions, our growth is not right in the sight of the Lord. Are we growing in Christ? Are we growing according to God's word? We got to walk in the truth. Please read for me the next verse, if someone can read for me louder. Verse 5. Verse 5. I think you don't have a habit of reading louder. And now I say to you that it is not as though I was at no command with you, mm -hmm. but that which we have had from the beginning, beginning that we love, love one another. Not only you and I got to walk in the truth, we need to walk in love. The word love is the most used and abused vocabulary in the whole world. And Christians are the only people who have the right to use this word because God has demonstrated his love on the cross of Calvary. That is the agape love, self-sacrificial love. And my favorite word, love. And John is the right person to speak about this love because he is the apostle of love. And God is love. Love one another. We must walk in love. Are we lovable people? This evening we can look into our own life. Lord, am I a lovable person? Do you have that God's love, agape love, self-sacrificial love? Do you love my people? Do you love people sincerely? If someone asks me, why are you in Jamtara? Why did you go to North India? Because I love Christ. Nothing else. I love people. We are surrounded by a particular tribe called Santal tribals. God willing, I'll show the, the clips tomorrow. Northern part of India. We are surrounded by that particular people. They are not my relatives. They are not my, I don't have any blood relation with them. But I still love them. Do you love people? You cannot hug a tree. Well, you can hug a tree, but tree will never hug you. But you hug people. Do you love people? I really love people. Once I was traveling from uh, Chennai to Howrah by Coromandel Express. I don't know anyone has traveled by that train, one of the prestigious trains in the olden time. Uh, I was in the third AC and there was an young man. So we talked with each other. He was so happy when he heard that I am from Kerala, spending my time in uh, northern part of India with my family. So I started sharing uh, gospel with him and he was so angry. Till that moment he was okay. I started presenting Christ and uh, he started abusing me. And in Hindi, we say gali dete hain. Started abusing me. And he said in Hindi, you know, aap log jaise log hai na, hamara sanatan dharam ko thod dete hai. That means, you destroy our eternal religion. You divide our country. And he would about to beat me. He was so angry. And with a smiling face, I was sitting there, I was talking with him. And he was so angry. And I told him, my dear, we love this country. We pray for this country. But he was very angry. And he knows only this is white man's religion. This is another religion. And I started sh sharing with him, this is not religion. This is the relationship with Christ. You need to be saved. He was very angry. He didn't want to listen to anything. And he was about to get down in Karakpur. You know Karakpur? Where we have the IIT. Your present uh, Google CEO studied there. And I will get down after two hours in Howrah. And this fellow was about to get down. He took the uh, luggage and he said, Sir, I'm leaving. And he said, I'm so sorry. I was very angry at you. And uh, you were so smiling. And uh, I'm so sorry. But I want to tell you one thing before he got down. You don't know who I am. I'm the RSS leader in IIT Kharagpur. 
and we coordinate uh, so many things. But let me tell you one thing. By the time he was about to get down with the luggage, and that is the longest platform in all Asia, Karakpur platform. And I also got down with him when he started telling me those things. And I got down with him and he said, he put hand around me and said, I'm so sorry. But let me tell you one thing. I have some wonderful Christian friends in our college. And they are the most lovable people I have ever seen in my life. Oh, then I got the hold. I said, yes, that's what I was sharing with you. We were not lovable people. We were cruel people. We were selfish people. We don't have any inherent nature in us that we could love people. We were selfish people. We were bad people. But we share the love of Christ to others. That is gospel. If we can truly love people who hate you, who harm you, who gets angry at you, if we can share the love of Christ to them, that is Christ's love. That is gospel. And he gave me his card and I still I am in contact with him. Are you able to show that love to your friends, your colleagues, at your workplace, school, college, you may not be a gospel preacher, but that's what his Christian life is all about. We got to walk in love. Are we lovable people? If you truly love people, you will share your faith. If you truly love your friends, your neighbors, your colleagues, your neighborhood, you will share the love of Christ. When was the last time you shared gospel with somebody? You don't have to give me the answer. I'm just asking you that. You give the answer to the Lord. When was the last time you gave a track to somebody? When was the last time you said, I am a Christian, I am a joyful Christian, I have eternal life, and I really love you, and I want to share about this joy? When was the last time you did? You may say that, brother, I'm not a theologian. I never studied in a seminary. I don't know many things about profound things in the Bible. You may not know, but one thing you know, you were blind. Now, you can see. That is gospel preaching. And if you love people, you will do that. When was the last time you shared your faith with someone? We got to walk in the truth. Secondly, we got to walk in love. Let's read the verse, verse 3. And this is love, that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment that as you have heard from the beginning... You should walk in it. What can you learn from there? You don't need a big expositor or, or a big interpreter to explain that verse. You need to walk in obedience. Walk in it. Obey his commandments. You got to walk in the truth. You got to walk in love. And thirdly, the Spirit of God says, walk in obedience. I was so disobedient in my childhood. If my mother calls me this side, I will go that side. So for that, you know, my mother would, go, would say that, you go that side, then I would come this side. <laughs> I was a headache to everyone. I was a headache to everyone. Obedience was so difficult. I was so rebellious. Half obedience is not obedience. We are very good in that. Half obedience. God expects complete obedience. You know, I love studying Bible. I love reading Bible. There were nights that I have never slept in my life. I read Bible. One principle I have learned from Genesis to Revelation. There are young people listening to me here. Listen carefully. One principle I have le learned from Genesis to Revelation. Listen carefully. God is only one principle. You know what is that? Obey God. Get the blessing. Disobey God. Lose the blessing. Get the punishment. And plus, get the curse. You would say, brother, we are New Testament believers. Well, that is in the Old Testament, yes. 
in Deuteronomy chapter 28 and 29, blessings from the Mount of Gerizim and the curse from the Mount of Ebal. And God says, if you obey, if you do these things, you will be blessed. And you may say, brother, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 says, God has blessed us with all the heavenly blessings. Yes, that is true. But I can show you so many other verses from the New Testament. Whether it is Old Testament or New Testament, God has only one principle. If you obey, if you fulfill the condition, you will be blessed. If you obey Him, obedience, that's what God expects from us. That also complete obedience. Whether it is Old Testament or New Testament, whether it is Kerala or Canada, whether it is east or west, God does not have. He doesn't change. God doesn't change. He has only one principle. You may say that, brother, we are young people. We live in this standard and older people live in that standard. No. God has only one principle. Obey God. Get the blessing. Disobey God. Get the punishment. Huh? Is there punishment for God's people? We are all comforted by Romans chapter 8 verse 1. You know Romans 8 1? What does it say? Huh? What is that? Uh, there is no? Uh, Malayali is finished with that verse. But in English that is not over. Did you notice that? Yeah, it's here. You know in Malayalam only that first part is there. But look at the English words in KJV. Who does not have condemnation? Look at the words carefully. Who does not have condemnation? Yes. Look at the, the last phrase in that. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Malayalis are all comforted with that first verse. <laughs> huh? In Malayalam Bible, that second part is not there. Why it is not there, you ask me after the message, I will explain to you. Uh, this is not a class setting. Yeah? There's some textual problem there. Who doesn't have condemnation? One who after, walk after the Spirit. If you study the book of Romans chapter 8, you know what is the subject there? The struggle between the Spirit and the flesh. You may be a child of God. You are a believer in Christ. But if you walk after the flesh... If you are a fleshy Christian, if you are a carnal Christian, if you are walking after the flesh, Adi Orapa, no doubt. There is condemnation. Who does not have condemnation? Of course, we don't have, children of God do not have white throne judgment. But this life and the life to come. Are we obedient Christians? Are we walking in Christ? Are we walking in the truth? Are we walking in love? Are we walking in obedience? There are some children, some young people listening to me here. Turn with me to uh, 1 John chapter 4 or oh, 5. Look at verse 3. If you love God, what you will do? It is written very clearly there. If you love the Lord, what you will do? First John chapter 5 verse 4. 5, 5 verse 4. Chapter 5. Uh, 5 verse 3. Look at that. Five ver ah. This is the love of God. Ah. If you love the Lord, what you will do? Why do you obey your parents? Uncle, if we don't obey our parents, dinner will not be given. <laughs> or, what do you do? Why do you obey your parents? In one family I heard, you know, that, uh, Mone, what do you want, Adi or Wadi? <laughs> you ask for either. You want Adi or Wadi? Why do we obey our parents? 
uncle wifi will be switched off that is why <laughs> wifi will be switched off so i am very obedient in the family we are afraid of punishment that was the old testament principle why do you obey your parents because we love our parents yes why do we obey the lord because we love the lord obedience should come from love of god obedience should come from loving the lord because i can't disappoint my heavenly father that is why i obey him if you have that principle if our children have that principle if our young people have that principle uncle i love my parents that's why i obey them on this earth i don't have anyone else like them my father my mother i can't replace them and i really love them and if you love your parents you will obey them same principle is applied in your spiritual life if you love the lord what you will do you will obey your lord you will walk in obedience that's why the bible says obedience is better than sacrifice are we obedient you know when we were studying in bangalore we used to sing that song trust and obey for there is no other way to be happy in jesus if you want to be happy if you want to be a joyful christian what you must do trust and obey for there is no other way for there is no other way if you want to be a joyful christian but we used to sing that song in some other way you know how we used to sing i don't know whether you know you have you ever sung in that way i don't know but we were too naughty we used to sing that song trust and obey if there is no other way <laughs> you know that difference huh if there is no other way what you will do we are so obedient people walk in the truth walk in love walk in obedience look at verse 7 to 11 here the subject is a little different but i want to bring an application from there you know from verse 7 to 11 in second john during john's time some false teachers were trying to creep into the church of god false teachers in first century during that context some gnostics you know these gnostics did not believe that jesus christ came in the flesh according to their teaching matter is evil and spirit is holy so a god who is holy cannot take upon the form of man or flesh christ was not completely he was not human he was like a phantom he was like a ghost he was like a superman he was not in the human flesh so they thought that spirit is holy and matter is evil therefore christ could not come in the flesh and john says do not allow them in your house also because i have seen him yeah first john chapter 1 we have handled him we have gazed to him we have looked upon him we have heard him we have touched the words of life we have seen him we have seen christ and we have touched him he was not just a spirit he was in the flesh that was the problem during the time of john but today my goodness 101 heresies 101 heresies you should be very careful and brethren believers assembly believers are mostly attacked in many places I like young people so much. You know, I I spend most of my time with young people. I've spoken to young people more than any other older folks in my life. I like this music also. I also sometimes sing. <laughs> But there is a problem in music. Huh? We can be carried away by music. 
There is nothing called Christian music. Huh? There is nothing called Christian music. I was invited to one of the churches in Dubai by young people and they said, Uncle, you must speak. And uh, it's a music church. Huh? Our boys, they, they want to be known as music church. And they call me, Uncle, you are going to speak for 12 minutes, but we are going to sing for two hours. <laughs> yeah, our young people likes to sing. Very good. But they don't want to listen. They don't like preaching. They don't like Bible study also. Very boring. But singing, entertainment, and these things, we all like. We all like singing. And that's the way many of our young people are trapped by the devil. That's why he said, there is no Christian music. There is only Christian lyrics. Mind it. No Christian music. There is only Christian lyrics. What is the beauty of singing? If you have the word of God in, in the song. You know that singing is not a spiritual gift. Sharon. I like Sharon. I, because I knew him from, you know, when he was small. I was happy that when he was singing. Have you ever noticed in the Bible? Singing is not mentioned as a spiritual gift. Have you ever observed? We have 18, 19, 20, 21 spiritual gifts written in the Bible. But singing is never mentioned as a spiritual gift. Well, where does it come? In spiritual activities. Where does it come? Where can we put singing? Yes, in edification. If there is God's word. Why do we like old songs in Malayalam? Why do we sing the old hymns? Because it has God's word. Only the word of God can, can edify a believer. Don't be carried away by music. I'm just telling an example. Music is good. Music is controlled by three things. Well, I don't see any drum set here. We have, yeah. The percussion. Talam. Huh? We like it. That stimulates our flesh. Don't take it away. It's good. You should keep on singing. Wonderful. We must have all this. But it can stimulate our flesh. The rhythm. Second, we have the string music. We had a brother who was sitting and playing this guitar. You know, guitar touches our soul. Our soul. Then we have the wind music. Organ. We have the accordion. All these things can touch our spirit, not Holy Spirit. Ah, never think that when I say spirit, human spirit. These three are good. These should complement the singing. But what can edify us? Only God's word in every song. That's why singing is never mentioned as a spiritual gift. But it can be used in the assembly where believers can be edified when the words are legible and clear when you sing. That's why we love, still we love old hymns, old songs, because it is rich in theology, rich in God's word. If a song does not have God's word, it is not going to edify us. Why did I say that example? I have hundreds of examples I can tell you. Be careful. We should not be carried away by anything and everything. We must walk in wisdom. False doctrines sometimes, not from outside, it can come out from within. That's what Paul says in, in, in Acts chapter 20. After I go, grievous wolves can attack the church from without and within. That's the danger happened in many, many assemblies. Walk in wisdom. We are living at the last minute of the 11th hour. Walk in wisdom. We go to walk in the truth. Secondly, some are sleeping, I think. Secondly, walk in love. The third one, 
Walk in obedience, the fourth one. Walk in wisdom. We'll read the uh, verse 12 and we will wind it here. And having many things, the last thing that we are going to discuss now. Having many things to write unto you, I would not write with paper and ink, but I trust to come unto you and speak face to face that our joy may be full. I like the word joy. Joy was introducing me here. And that is the translation of my name. We should be joyful Christians. Do you enjoy your Christian life? I enjoy every bit of it. I'm happy that I'm a Christian. I'm a child of God. And I certainly believe that Christian life is the most blessed life. Some young people think that, you know, this is the most boring life. You can't do this. You can't do that. No, no, no. This should be the most enthusiastic life. Christian life should be the most enthusiastic life. Do you have that enthusiasm? Look at some Christians. No joy. Younger than Atila Bashe Parnendo Kalani Voyo Ladigine. No joy. No happiness. Saved for 10 years, 15 years. 30 years, Lord has been faithful. He provided our needs. He protected us more than we have asked. The Lord provided. How wonderfully the Lord is taking care of us. I was in Bangladesh in last year. My goodness. 92% Muslims. Praise God that we are not born in that country. In Afghanistan, North, North, North Korea. God in his marvelous grace and mercy, he has provided all our needs. He has protected us. We are so ungrateful. We are not joyful Christians. You know the Bible says, the joy of the Lord is? The joy of the Lord should be our strength. In any circumstances. You know the word enthusiasm? It's not a secular word. You know from where did that word come? Enthusiasm. It's not a secular word. It is not a worldly word. It is a biblical word. Never forget. You know enthusiasm in Greek? En theo. En means en. Theo means God. En theo means one who is in God is the real joyful person. En theo. One who is in God is the real joyful person. You are in Christ, Christ in you. And you should be a joyful person. You got to walk in joy. Are you joyful? You know that Paul writes the book of Philippians from a Roman prison. You know what is the main subject in the book of Philippians? Huh? Chapter 4, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord. Always, again I say unto you, rejoice. We sing that chorus also. But have you ever thought from where Paul has written that book? Uh, we think that jail means Toronto, you may have jail with all the facilities. <laughs> huh? We have gone to many jails in India. Condition is very bad, but still, we have gone with the MS courses in jails, prison you know, many prisons. But your prisons may have very good uh, facility here. But Paul has not returned from a good prison. I had the privilege of seeing that prison in 2015. It is dungeon. It is not prison. It is a dirty place below the sea level. And he was in that place. It was a dark place. From a small hole, he used to get light and... He has written these epistles. And he was in chains. And the disciple, you know, he was in chains with the soldiers. And the soldiers had shift three times to 24 hours, 8 into 3. And he writes to believers. You know what he writes? You? 
For me, it is quite paradoxical. And the assembly in Philippi, they were concerned about Paul. And they sent an end man, Epaphroditus. If you have time, read that. Chapter 2, verse 26 onwards, you can see there. Verse 23 onwards. Epaphroditus, he came to the prison to assist Paul to see, to hear about the whereabouts about this old man. You know what happened to this young man? What happened to Epaphroditus? He fell sick and he was about to die. And then Paul writes, I'm sending this book with Epaphroditus. Don't worry about me. I'm okay in prison. I'm sending this young man. Take this letter to the Philippians and tell them, I'm happy, but you rejoice. Peace that passeth all our understanding may rule our hearts. Chapter 4, verse, do not be worried about anything. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. Chapter 4, again he says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Aha. That is walking in joy. Let me wind up here. Only a true Christian can rejoice in every circumstance. We had terrible times in Jampara. There were opposition from every side. We thought several times that we will run away from there. We will go back from there. There were times like that. But Lord is good. And the joy of the Lord was our strength. Are you enjoying your Christian life? Are you a rejoicing Christian? Are you walking in joy? Only a true Christian can rejoice in sickness, in difficulties, in troubles. And whenever faith is tested in turbulent times, that time our real color will be shown. Are we walking in joy? It was in 1999, I was in Calcutta. I was watching the TV. And in that program, there was a live interview. Previous day, Graham Stein and his two innocent children were burned alive in, in Orissa. And the next day, his wife, Gladys Stein, she was being interviewed by the TV man, the press man, press reporter. And the interviewer asked her, you lost your husband, you lost your two young children. You know, they were on vacation from Uti. They came to Orisa to be with the parents. These two young children went with the father for an evening program in a village. And we know what happened. They, they, they were pierced by the spear inside the car. And that car was burned alive. Graham Stein and two children, innocent children were burned alive. And the next day, I saw this lady. Oh my, I could see a great glory on her face. Lost her husband, lost two innocent children, only her daughter is left alone. And I could see the joy and happiness on her face. You know, the interviewer asked her a very serious question. So many questions they asked. But one question, the answer I really liked. You know what, what she was asked? You lost your husband, you lost your children. How will you live tomorrow? You know what was the answer she gave? That's a beautiful answer she gave. Because. Yes. Because he lives. I can face tomorrow. That is real joy. That is happiness. This evening let me ask you. We may have problems. We may have struggles. We may have sickness. We may have turbulent times. Are you walking in joy? We got to walk in the truth. We got to walk in love. And we got to walk in obedience. Not only that, we got to walk in wisdom. And we got to walk in joy. May the Lord help us to walk according to God's word. As we heard this evening, we got to walk in Christ. And we got to walk in according to God's word. May the Lord help us to live according to God's word and touch many lives in the days to come. Thank you so much for listening to the message carefully.